Well, hello, and uh, welcome to another in the series of Cafe Insights. I'm Andrew Vine, CEO of the Insight Bureau, and today I'm at the Fullerton Hotel here in Singapore with adventurer Rob Newell. How are you? Very well. Thank Good. You. Welcome to Singapore. Thanks. Rob's originally from the UK, now lives in Hong Kong, and is the author of a couple of books and, and speaks at various conferences around leadership. So, Rob, tell us a little bit about the big adventures you've done. Well, I've done two particularly big adventures. The first one was a bicycle ride where I had decided I wanted to go on a very long bicycle ride, but instead of setting off from England where I lived, I flew as far away from home as I could think of, which was to northeast Siberia. And then I spent about three years cycling back home again. I went through places like Russia in the winter and Papua New Guinea, Afghanistan, had tons of adventures and finally got home. And the second big adventure I did was a walk where I flew from where I now live, which is in Hong Kong. I flew up to the Gobi Desert in Mongolia and then I walked home, which took me six months. Again, I was in the winter at the beginning in the Gobi Desert, walked the length of China, which was, I have to say, it was harder doing the walk than the bicycle ride. Wow. Well, I left England in 1988, and I went to Australia, and I never returned. But I didn't have half of the adventures that you had. (laughs) But I must say... um, you, know, you don't mind me saying this, but when I heard about this guy who'd walked from across Mongolia and China and cycled across Siberia and uh, Afghanistan, I was kind of expecting some gung-ho kind of Royal Marine type. And you're not, are you? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty ordinary. As, uh, actually, before I started doing these adventures, I was a geography high school teacher. And when I, you know, I've never been the sort of person who was in the top sports teams or never been a very brave person I, I used to get frightened of things very easily and I still do so I found on these adventures it wasn't about me being super tough and being able to get through the obstacles it was much more about my mindset or my attitude that I took to the, the challenge yeah, clearly it hasn't held you back and then of course you know many of these uh, things that you've learned along the way mm-hmm. uh, is what you can now help others with mm-hmm. I, I've listened to you, you speak about your journeys and it's extremely personable and it's uh, you know a very honest story but it's not just about you that's the thing it's uh, it's about your exploits but it's how you draw your audience in I think relating to their worlds too yeah yeah I think um, there are a number of different things I learned along the way I've, I've heard it said um, a, a, the job of a storyteller is to tell the truth and so I really feel like I've got to be honest about sure. how I felt the doubts the fears the times I almost gave up along the way and I reflect on on some of these I call them attitudes of adventure that I learned along the way and those would include things like uh, having a resilient mindset practicing self-care so looking after myself learning how to to network with people actually rather than use the word network I like to say remember we don't have to make it on our own because mm. although on these adventures I was usually on my own I couldn't make it on my own I had to learn to ask for advice to receive help and actually I find speaking at corporate conferences the, these little lessons I, I share seem to really connect with the corporate world though their context is so different. Yes, yeah, so I remember you saying, you know, that we're all on some kind of adventure mm. and, and it's about how we uh, apply ourselves to that. You mentioned a few of them, but perhaps you can go into a little bit more detail about some of the examples that you, you, you give. Yeah, so there are all sorts of different ways. I, I, I learned about these lessons kind of intuitively as I went along. But one, for example, would be when I was in the depths of winter in Siberia. Mm. And I knew, this was at the start of the journey, I, I had a three-year goal to cycle back to London, which is great to have a long-term goal. But sometimes a long-term goal is just too big and too kind of depressing and you've yeah. got a long way to go. So I broke it down. What's my medium-term goal is to get to Russia before my visa runs out. Then I ended up having to break it down into my day-to-day goal, which at that point was I had to cycle 67 miles every day on these really bad quality roads yeah. to hit those other goals. And I found that in the rest of life as well. I need my long-term goal to, to know where I'm going. But sometimes you have to break it down, though, day-to-day what you're really looking to try and do Um, another one was when I was in Papua New Guinea and I was trying to find a boat I was doing this whole expedition without flying I was hitchhiking across the sea on boats I was trying to find a boat from Papua New Guinea to Australia and I ended up just having to meet 
so many different people asking them, do you have a boat? And everybody would say, no, but you should meet my friend Andrew. He might help. And then Andrew would introduce me to his friend uh, Keith, who would then introduce me to his friend Pete. And it was this huge chain of people I went through to find a boat. And it just taught me the power of learning to, to ask, to follow up leads, and then you finally find your boat. So that's goal setting and... Uh... Goal setting and the, the networking. And one of the things that is your claim to fame is that you were noticed by National Geographic. Yeah, I had um, some good fortune there. I, I On the first the first trip, the cycling trip, I just self-filmed myself by balancing my camera on a rock and cycling past it and doing video diaries. So it was very much a, a self-filmed effort. Yeah. But when I got back to London, I had a, a fortunate break where National Geographic got in touch and bought my mm. self-film footage, made a six-part series. And then when I did the walk, they actually pre-commissioned a four-part series which added new challenges, having to film it at a more professional level, but it was a great experience. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh, recently you've just come back from a, your latest little adventure with Christine, your wife, uh, where you cycled across America. Yeah, um, this was actually Christine's idea. Oh, we, okay. um, we'd, we've been married a few years and I've gradually got Christine doing more adventures, but usually only for one or two nights, maximum two nights in a tent. But then about a year ago she had this idea, why don't we go on a, a big expedition? So we uh, went on a tandem bike, which worked very well so for us. So you had to stay together. Right? We had to stay together. <laughs> and it actually it meant we were on the same team. Team. It wasn't like we were sort of, oh, why are you going so fast? Why are you going so slow? Together, we will get up this hill or whatever the challenge was. And we, we started in Los Angeles in March and then uh, just end of August, we made it to New York. So it was a great joint adventure. Terrific. Okay. <laughs> well, that's really great to hear. Well, we look forward to um, hearing more of your adventures in the future. Hopefully you'll see you back in Singapore very soon. Brilliant. Thanks right, so much, Andrew. Thanks. Thanks.